Welcome to the UCL Institute for Environmental Design and Engineering Integrated Building Design webinar. At IED, our teaching and research tackle some of the greatest and most complex issues facing our built environment. This webinar series explores how buildings can adapt to some of the challenges and changes we faced in the first century, such as climate change, resource efficiency, and health and well-being. My name is Lorna, and I am a PhD student at the IED Institute. So before we start today, I will run through some housekeeping notes. So just to let you know, today's webinar will be recorded. So if you'd like to watch it afterwards on demand, you can. There will be a Q&A sessions after today's presentation. So feel free to use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to post any questions throughout. So without further ado, I will begin quickly in introducing our speakers before I hand over to them. So today, we are delighted to be joined by Daniela Catalano. Daniela is a senior building physics engineer at Burajapo. She works with the sustainability team where she brings her energy efficiency skills. She also enjoys being involved from the early conceptual design stage throughout project, project management and following with continuous commissioning and energy management. We are also joined by, by Marco Modoni. Marco is a senior engineer in sustainability and building physics at Burajapo. Marco has worked on a number of projects with high sustainability aspirations across a range of topics with great focus on actual performance beyond just building regulation, energy compliance. Marco is a passionate about streamlining processes, making the ordinary but necessary aspects quicker so people can spend more time coming up with innovative solutions to complex problems. So let me come over to them. Thank you, Lorna. So firstly, thank you for giving us the opportunity to present this really interesting project. Today, Daniel and I will be talking about Stratford Waterfront in East London uh, with a deeper focus on two particular case studies, Southerwell's East Theatre and UAL London College of Fashion. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this development, which is by the London Legacy Development Corporation, LLDC, is a mixed use uh, residential development in East London, which comprises among uh, the residential tower also some very iconic buildings. These are the VNA East Museum, the UAL London College of Fashion, BBC Concert Studio, and Thunderwell's East Theatre, all surrounded by the public realm, which includes some retail um, in, the, in the scheme. Uh, Bureau Apple has work um, in the uh, development alongside Alison Morrison as lead architects and O'Donnell and Tumoy who are the architects of specifically Southern Wells and VNA. Bureau Apple is providing a very broad range of engineering disciplines across the project, ranging from master plan design for uh, utilities, transport, people flow, bridge engineering, to a fully multidisciplinary engineering service on each of the individual buildings in the scheme. The sustainability targets across the strato waterfront site are exemplary, particularly for energy and water consumption. Since the early stage of the design, we developed a sustainability framework, which you can see in this picture, um, which uh, identified three main categories of um, we uh, the, want the design to go towards. The framework is structured to provide a healthy, comfortable environment by implementing some of the well-standard features into the design, such as, for, in, for instance, staircase, open staircase to promote walking in the building, or by enhancing um, visual comfort, uh, preventing any glare risk. Studies that are not normally um, part of a standard building physical sustainability scope. The framework addressed also um, the necessity for a, a low environmental impact design, and this is by targeting BREEAM uh, ratings of excellent for all the buildings, but we managed to target and achieve also BREEAM outstanding, particularly for a UAL London College of Fashion. We also target 15% reduction in material and body carbon, uh, and that was achieved by uh, specifying GBBS content in the cement mix of the substructure and the superstructure of all the buildings. And we target and also achieve all the uh, water credit by uh, BREEAM credit by specifying water low fixtures and rainwater or grain water or a mix of the two um, harvesting solutions. Um, we designed the buildings to be resilient to future climate projection, uh, but not just 2020, uh, we went to 2050 uh, climate scenario. 
Finally, the framework address also the need for a smart and efficient design. And this translates really in uh, doing operational energy prediction at design stage and target and achieve a 25% reduction on the unregulated energy and carbon of the building. We hope that all these targets will then be um, measured and confirmed during post-occupancy evaluation um, because the development is now under construction uh, by MACE and will be in operation uh, around 2022-2023. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I would like to present you Southern Wells Theater uh, as a case study of good integrated design. Uh, the next slide will demonstrate how the interdiscipline uh, coordination was really fundamental to deliver the natural ventilation strategy, particularly for the entrance foyer of the theater. Just to give you a brief introduction on the project, you can see from this rendering provided by O'Donnell and Tomoe architects, uh, the building uh, is 8,000 square meter and uh, it has a main entrance act access from the podium level which give access to the uh, entrance foyer, which goes along these two main uh, facades. And then on the upper floors, we have a green room, um, studios, uh, and other um, amenities uh, for uh, the, the staff. Uh, and you can see the, the biggest studios with the shed roof on the, on the top. We work closely with the facade engineer to develop uh, solar shading solutions and uh, glare risk control um, elements like you can see in, in the facade. Uh, this is the other entrance from uh, um, coming from the uh, overground station, which leads straight into the foyer from the other side. Uh, you can also appreciate the terrace, which present green elements on it and uh, the biggest studio one with the shed roof again. So um, the environmental section in this slide was our way at the very beginning of the design to summarize the, to the client the key design features. So this includes passive design features such uh, for instance, the natural ventilation coupled with uh, night purge ventilation and exposed thermal mass of the ceiling, uh, good uh, building air tightness, but this also shows active design elements uh, such as the uh, high efficiency chillers for cooling, the connection to the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park district heating, providing heating and hot water service to the building. We also show the uh, importance of uh, low uh, energy uh, LED lighting and controls throughout the uh, buildings and reduce fan power of the mechanical ventilation and terminal units such as the Funko units, plus high heat recovery uh, through the mechanical ventilation. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one of the key challenges on this project was uh, the design of the entrance foyer. On one end, we have the future building owners, other wells, asking for a space that is fully transparent, that is to uh, welcome passersby to uh, go in the space, but is also fully naturally ventilated because and this is great, we want to reduce energy and carbon footprint of the building but is also for 1,000 people. And to put this in context, we uh, have also LLDC, uh, the developer, reminding us the importance of design resilience to 2050 climate scenario. So before even considering the option of naturally ventilated the space, we ask the client, how often will there be 1,000 people? Because as you can imagine, is a very fine balance between the heat gains in the space and the heat losses that natural ventilation can offset. Uh, so the, 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 the client meeting was really useful to uh, understand that actually the occupancy is predicted to be late in the evening during the um, performance break. Uh, and after the actual performance. So we don't have coincidental uh, heat gains from the solar during the day and the occupancy, which made basically the, the, the strategy a bit more uh, doable. Uh, the other important point was to uh, clarify uh, with the client uh, the level of 
comfort um, that you can expect in a space fully naturally ventilated because we cannot go for a, a 24 degree in, in the space we are definitely expecting something uh, a bit higher um, historically sipsi guide a um, recommended that uh, the temperature shouldn't exceed 28 degrees for more than one percent of the year. Uh, however, uh, we went for uh, the CBC TM52 thermal adaptive thermal comfort assessment, which is a bit more robust and complex and take into account the human ability to gradually acclimatize to periods of increased temperature. Therefore, the um, expected temperature would be some what in between 28 and probably indoor operating temperature of 30 degrees would be acceptable when outside the temperature is predicted to be 40 degrees. Um, to be honest, I'm still sweating thinking of the meeting with the client trying to explain all of this theory in an easy, understandable way. Anyway, uh, the, the biggest question is, how can we achieve thermal comfort by natural ventilation only? And personally, I think the answer is by using a holistic approach to design, which brings all the relevant disciplines together, including architecture, facade engineering, MEP engineering, lighting, security, and acoustic. I think this picture summarizes potentially all the key features we introduced, but um, we basically follow the GLA cooling hierarchy that you can see in the diagram below. So we first minimize the internal heat gains uh, by specifying LED lighting, uh, low power screens and smart controls to reduce that uh, heat uh, gains in the space. We then manage the unwanted solar heat gains in the space in summer by having a relative low G value, but also introducing horizontal and vertical uh, solar shadings in the form of green roofs, uh, canopy, and uh, uh, this element, which also have a function of glare uh, risk control. Um, and then we um, introduce the actual natural ventilation through a side uh, ventilation strategy with top and bottom openings and also cross ventilation here in the corner which is the most critical area due to the double aspect of it. Um, also we expose the ceilings which was also a win-win in regards to the uh, embodied carbon by reducing simply the material for any false ceiling. So here you can appreciate the uh, actual design, uh, which was um, the result of a close collaboration between uh, the architects, obviously, and the facade engineers, but also the security engineer specifying the amount of openings that is allowed at night, which is only 100 mils. And all these inputs were basically <clears throat> taken and um, using IS uh, software modeled to understand what kind of temperature uh, we could achieve in the space. The top windows are actuated by uh, temperature and CO2 level controls for each of the thermal zoning the foyer behind is uh, split into. It. As I mentioned, there are these wind mitigation measures which are also useful for glare and solar control. And finally, the bottom windows are just uh, man manually operated. So if we look at the results, um, we see that for most of the summertime, uh, the operative temperature or the fields like temperature in the uh, space, uh, we're looking uh, particularly at this uh, corner, which is the most critical one stays within the green band of comfort range. So these are, according to the TM52 criteria, the temperature acceptable uh, based on the outside temperature. And this is uh, against the 2050 climate scenario. However, as you can see, there are some uh, spikes uh, in the plot of temperature, uh, which happens to be when there's a peak occupancy and very high tem outside temperature. Um, so in these cases, um, we had to come up with a different solution. And that's why we had worked closely with the MEP engineers and the architects again, um, to try think how can we achieve thermal comfort during these peak conditions. In that scenario, uh, so let's say whenever the temperature outside is above 30 degrees, 
the top windows will be automatically closed through the BMS or uh, by the facility manager, and fresh air will be um, diverted from the air handling unit that normally serves the auditoria to the foyer, which is just um, running uh, around the, the auditoria space. So all we uh, need really is a small branch uh, of that work um, connected to that HU, which diverts some of the air into the space during the performance break. So the auditorium HU will also have a return air duct, which is from the top of this part of the foyer, which is double height space, so that the heat can be taken away and leave a comfortable temperature on the lower level of the foyer. But um, to address the specific issue of the most critical area, which is the uh, corner uh, with the double aspect, um, we introduce uh, on the floor uh, a fan coil unit, so a sort of a trench cooling, which provide additional local cooling to the space. You can see in this image uh, the actual Dutch work just above the uh, bar, uh, which is open to the foyer. Um, so that required, of course, lots of coordination between the mechanical engineers and the architect to uh, nicely introduce into the design uh, this additional piece of uh, mechanical equipment. Uh, to go into the detail of the ME design, uh, you can see here the air handling unit, which has a supply branch, which goes into the plenum of the auditoria, so is displacement ventilation. And then you have a diversion branch with uh, motorized dampers, which you can also see in this view, just above the bar in the foyer, um, which provides almost 75% of the tempered air of the HU to the space um, just during the intervals. And then you have the extra system from the top of the auditoria, as well as the local um, extra from the top of the foyer uh, back to the HU, so we can also recover part of the heat. So by applying this sort of a hybrid strategy, uh, you can see from this comparisons of the two plots of temperature, we managed to drop the uh, spikes down to uh, a comfortable uh, range. Um, and what is really exciting for me about this is that we kind of develop a, a strategy that provides thermal comfort for most of the time of summer. And it also addresses the specific issue of uh, peak condition um, sometime in, uh, in, in summertime. Uh, so if we really think um, a comparison between this scenario and a scenario where we had a proper air handling unit or a cooling into the space, that equates to nearly 60 megawatt hour of uh, energy saved per year, or if you want 32 tons of CO2 uh, saved in the space. Please keep in mind that this is also a 2050 climate scenario, which has a, expectancy uh, probably of 11 years or more. So in a normal kind of summer uh, scenario, the, the mechanical ventilation should never come into uh, place. Um, the key lesson for, for me was uh, the um, understanding of the client's needs. So what was the actual occupancy and what was the level of comfort expected in the space. But what was amazing about all this is the discipline coordination to just make this hybrid ventilation design strategy working. And with this, I hand it over to Daniela. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Uh, I'm delighted in the second part uh, of the presentation to introduce another case study along the ecology of fashion and uh, talking more into detail about the operational energy assessment that has been uh, achieved in stage uh, four. If you go next. Um, in terms of uh, the building, I can see that the um, London College of Fashion is considered as one of the largest buildings within the East Bank scheme. It covers a surface of 36,000 square meters. 
as you can see, is a, a gigantic building in the, um, the Stratford waterfront scenario. Um, this is, uh, it includes a mixing of uh, learning, studying, and teaching space with uh, um, uh, a uh, core area, which is the atrium, which connects the old part of the building, and uh, a lecture theater um, on the, um, the lower um, floor, and library as well, uh, which is developed into two floors. What uh, we have established in the first uh, in first system with the client were the key and the sustainability energy target. So it's very important to uh, before to start the assessment to define and coordinate with uh, um, the wide design team, uh, architect and the client. What are the, um, the the target? What what's the goal? What are the objectives? So in this case, the first that we um, the client wanted to achieve was the reduction of um, a regulated carbon emission. Uh, against a notional uh, baseline building by uh, reducing 25% um, evaluating during the design stage. And the second one, which is a um, uh, UAL aspiration, um, which is a University Art of London, the client, uh, to reduce the carbon emission by 10% um, in comparison confrontation uh, with existing UAL building across uh, London. So the comparison was made um, with uh, uh, existing university educational building. Here we can see uh, just uh, in general the layout and the internal viewing of the building. As you can see, um, we have a vertical uh, uh, internal heart core space, uh, um, which is connecting all the teaching and uh, um, studying areas uh, um, across the building. It's uh, very interesting, the shape and the design, um, which uh, uh, where sustainability uh, uh, in coordination with the architect uh, support and help to uh, find the right distribution and uh, uh, the right arrangement of uh, uh, the learning learning and the teaching spaces um, was very important in this uh, initial concept design initial phase to understand uh, the uh, need of the client, the aspiration, and uh, uh, in order and also to in order to define and to optimize, uh, uh, the, uh, define the target, and optimize um, the, the energy efficient of the building. If you go next. Um, in first instance, we have done an initial light touch and initial feasibility study. Um, here we can see the environmental strategy uh, diagram. Um, and uh, uh, the most important uh, and relevant point was to uh, start a discussion and coordination with uh, all uh, the relevant uh, um, members of the team. So the, from the facade engineer to uh, the structural and civil engineer to the mechanical and the building service and uh, especially consultant. In, uh, um, on the right side, uh, we started discussion to improve the fabric efficiency. So the facade uh, was essential at this point um, in order to uh, decide a very well insulated uh, fabric uh, um, and uh, integrated with uh, operable uh, window. Uh, at the same time, in parallel, we ran through the uh, MEP design uh, to, uh, to decide the right uh, modulating profile of the openable window in order to provide adequate natural ventilation through the space. From this diagram, we can uh, see how the ventilation is an essential point in our uh, strategy. The core, the heart space, the atrium, is uh, uh, one of the main components that we have uh, assessed with several studies from CFD, from more simplified analysis, in order to see uh, and understand what was the optimal uh, condition control strategy in order to uh, achieve the comfort into the space, but at the same time, uh, reduce the energy um, in terms of uh, auxiliary and uh, reducing the cooling uh, provision to uh, the, the, the area, the occupied area. Um, a second uh, step was to use, obviously, deploy um, renewable sources. Um, London College of Fashion has uh, considered, in this case, um, the PV panel photovoltaic uh, system, which, which covers uh, 500 70 square meter on the top. Um, so this is a second uh, element that was essential in order to meet uh, the target and the energy re requirement. 
Um, are there uh, further meeting and the Zen meeting were um, uh, making place with a specialty consultant from fire to a security consultant, to ICT and uh, acquisition. As you can see uh, on the uh, left side, um, the, uh, the second component was to improve the high uh, the efficiency of the mechanical component used for the uh, deployed for the mechanical plants. In fact, um, we um, we support, we help the decision and the, the selection of the mechanical component. Um, uh, and we help a lot at the uh, MEP and uh, uh, at the same time, uh, all, uh, all the uh, specialists uh, to, um, to consider and to um, decide for high efficiency um, uh, terminal like Funkel units um, or uh, consider the high air handle unit with uh, very low specific fan power. So these were very important uh, measures that we uh, we have embedded in our uh, in our strategy. And at the same time, we um, we coordinate with the lighting consultant, other specialists with the lighting consultant more specific to focus on uh, uh, very uh, high efficient. Uh, light fittings. As you can see in this diagram, um, we um, they were also deployed mostly in the um, central part of the space because we want to maximize the, the lighting, optimize the lighting across the perimeter uh, of the building. If you go next. So as I mentioned before, it um, uh, was super important, essential, the coordination discussion uh, with the clients first and architect and uh, uh, all of the uh, disciplines from the MEP to the lighting consultant, facade, acoustic sustainability, that was, was our role. So we were like us, we um, covered like a central role in all of the uh, environmental strategy and uh, was uh, important to, um, to improve uh, the building energy performance of the building and to understand what was uh, the main issue, how we could improve, uh, how we could uh, help the, um, the mechanical engineer, for instance, or the facade uh, in order to select the right uh, material, healthy material to reduce the body carbon. So there were all um, a sequence of uh, elements that uh, were totally focused to achieve one, uh, one target, uh, which is the optimization of the building from the energy efficiency point of view. So here you can see in the central picture, the energy model that was uh, built up in IES. I, um, I was very focused to, um, to describe and to reflect the design proposed from the architect in my thermal model. So in this case, I was uh, consider all of the external uh, features. So the shading, um, uh, I uh, model uh, with the accuracy, all the spaces. And uh, um, important, as I mentioned before, was the uh, more important role was the, uh, played from the uh, atrium, the hard space that you can see from this uh, central picture. It uh, uh, terminates on the top with the two chimneys. This is uh, uh, quite essential to understand also the uh, ventilation through uh, the spaces from the bottom to the top and uh, um, also to understand how we could avoid the warm air going to, into, the, uh, into the space. So all the strategy uh, in coordination with the mechanical engineers and at the same time with, uh, the, uh, with the architect and uh, structure facade, civil engineer and acoustic designer was important to to um, to convey to a, a higher um, the higher efficiency building and to achieve the um, the right reduction. Uh, the approach was based on in uh, first instance on a TM54 methodology, which is quite uh, simplistic and uh, not very well uh, detailed. And uh, secondly, I moved to an advanced HVAC modeling in uh, at the end of stage four. I'm starting with uh, uh, in stage two um, with a uh, TM54 approach because there was a lack of information and um, uh, inputs provided from the old specialist uh, uh, also from the uh, architect as well so the um, the first uh, um, the first part was based on simplification uh, calculation um, and uh, with a high level of uncertainty that hopefully was covered in stage four where um, I uh, undertook an advanced HVAC model Modeling. Um, in this case, I, I model more into deeper detail all the ductwork and uh, um, the heating, uh, cooling, ventilation system. This is just a uh, typical extract from uh, HVAC modeling. 
identifying a, a typical um, system that uh, it was considered in the, that was considered in the uh, analysis. Um, so first step uh, uh, before to start an advanced HVAC modeling is uh, gather and collect all information available from architects and all especially consultants in order to have a very good um, coordination and also uh, avoid any uh, lack or misses communication uh, in the first stage. I was collecting all the information about the uh, for first system for the um, uh, operating hours and occupy hours in the building. So I arranged a several meeting design a team meeting with the architect and with the client. Oh, UIL was uh, uh, important uh, to provide the occupancy profile, how the building can operate um, room by room also, which equipment should be installed uh, in, in the room. Because the London College of Fashion is uh, essentially is the, uh, an educational building, but at the same time, it includes a lot of different um, use. So we have workshops, teaching space, seminar, library, and um, comes rooms. So it embody a lot of different uh, um, different uh, um, uses, and it was very uh, important. To, it was very important to understand how the building could operate. So um, for how many hours uh, the machineries uh, uh, deploy the building could run through, and if they were running on continuously or for specific certain time, um, certain time during the day. Uh, secondly, we ask to the mechanical building service engineer information in regards of the, uh, the mechanical plan. So the specifications, schematics, everything was useful to understand um, how work the system. So uh, I ask mainly the uh, heating, chilling, um, chilling hot water and domestic hot water loops that was essentially to understand um, the uh, to understand the generator, all the components, pump, fans, all the elements that were deployed uh, in the system. Here an example um, the, of, the, um, of the HVAC system strategy. So just to give an overview and some extract from uh, the components of the, uh, from the air handle units and uh, uh, in terms of uh, um, the mechanical system and about the natural ventilation, how uh, the window were operating. Um, in terms of uh, um, uh, ventilation, you can see from this uh, uh, floor plan, on the uh, right side, we have uh, mainly uh, mechanical ventilated spaces. So um, the, all the rooms that uh, uh, have, uh, as you say, uh, workshops uh, or low, medium, high process, um, where we have a high uh, cooling load, we uh, were forced to uh, provide um, temperate um, air uh, at the back of the rooms. At the same time, um, uh, we applied a specific openable profile to uh, the windows. So they were considered in these spaces on the right so that were um, mainly uh, southeast, southwest uh, facing, um, were considered as mixed mode. Um, going to the other space, we have like in light blue uh, on the top north, um, northeast, in this case, um, more uh, at the same time, more mechanical ventilated uh, with low local cooling, fan cool units were deployed to this space due to the um, high load um, derived by the machineries that were deployed in, the, in each room. Uh, as I said, they were, um, the, the building has different uh, uses from uh, low process to high process. So all the workshop um, uh, contain a lot of different uh, machinery like the sewing machine uh, that uh, were all the information were provided from the uh, UIL in very uh, the deep detail. So I, um, I we consider all these element, uh, all the loads um, in order to understand where we had to provide uh, higher cooling or where was uh, necessary only to provide the natural ventilation. Uh, on the left side, you can see there are seminars, teaching space. So in this case, uh, we only uh, rely on the natural ventilation um, and uh, the mechanism uh, was based on automated window linked to the BMS. So in, uh, in my energy model, I, um, I provide um, solutions uh, of, in terms of uh, uh, modulating profile, how to open, how the, this window needs to operate, uh, uh, in which time and which specific hours of the day have to operate based on the internal temperature, outside temperature, 
culture. So the mechanism was uh, uh, coordinated and integrated then in the uh, mechanical specification and also in the facade uh, specification as well. So the role of the sustainability consultant here as a BH was, my role was very uh, important to, uh, to understand the, uh, the need of the occupants and at the same time where uh, was necessary cooling provision uh, and where not. So where we could only rely on the uh, natural ventilation. And uh, in, uh, uh, in the end, uh, we have the hard space uh, where if you go back, we, um, we have the hard space, so the core of the building. So in this case, for the hard space, we have only uh, displacement ventilation, all air, uh, minimum fresh air. So we uh, we were forced to provide the um, uh, air ventilation because of the uh, very hot temperature that the building can achieve during, uh, during the day. And this was driven by the overrating analysis assessment. Uh, also, we um, coordinate with, uh, with the MEP and and uh, uh, the facade as well to understand what was the best solution. And also with the specialists, how we could reduce the internal gains uh, in order to uh, minimize the, the, uh, the operation and uh, minimize the consumption from uh, different, uh, uh, from the auxiliary lighting and uh, uh, other energy uses. So uh, this HVAC system strategy gives a very brief overview on what was included uh, in, uh, uh, in my assessment. If you go next, our first uh, HVAC modeling was on the, the air side. So this is an extract just to give an example how I have model one of the space in the building. Um, this space that um, is uh, uh, included in the slide is uh, about the um, north um, north south uh, east uh, of the building where we model uh, mainly the um, um, uh, air um, uh, our primary air and uh, our fan call units uh, as you can see on the left um, i'm focused uh, on uh, the detail of the supply fan so in the hvac modeling we, we provide in the detail all um, the uh, input all the elements to understand uh, the the right uh, um, the right consumption the right design consumption in this case to understand the kilowatt that was uh, um, was produced from this uh, supply fan. So as you can see, I've just highlighted one of the component um, and uh, uh, based on the specification schedule provided by the, the building service, I uh, understood um, um, the, the specific power and I calculate as well the, um, the, the, the final, um, the final the energy, the energy of of the, of the each component of, the, in this case, of the supply fan. Also, it was very important to understand how we can control, how we can control the, um, the, the ventilation in, the, in this case, in the occupied area. So uh, another important element, uh, component of the, uh, of the system is um, the demand control ventilation. So I um, put another element under part, the proportional control system, how uh, I have uh, modulated uh, the uh, ventilation, the flow rate in the space. This was based on the uh, CO2. So I've created a ramping profile in this case, uh, as you can see, uh, and uh, it provided uh, the calculation of the flow rate that was necessary in order to um, to uh, avoid any uh, discomfort in the in the uh, to the occupant in the area. So these two elements that I've right here were um, were considered in the, the HVAC model that in a simple TM54 methodology that cannot be used because we cannot detail all the element, all the specific. Um, um, measures all uh, the inputs. So in this case, you can input the flow rate and uh, all the pressure. So for the, let's say for instance, for a supply fan. And at the same time, in terms of a control strategy for uh, the demand control ventilation, we can provide a good profile that uh, simulate reflect the um, the right uh, um, the right behavior in uh, in uh, indoor in the uh, occupied area. Um, so here in the picture as well, you can see. Okay, in the second one, we can talk about uh, um, 
we can see as well that, uh, how uh, is the system in uh, uh, in this space. So as you can see, we can, we have the VAB uh, units and all the duct works. And at the same time, uh, in the picture, you can see as well the windows and uh, uh, all the internal shading element that were considered and embedded in the strategy. So all uh, disciplines and integration with the uh, the structure, um, the finishes, uh, uh, mechanical plants uh, were super essential to understand how we could improve and how we could um, uh, optimize uh, the, the, the building in this case. Um, if you go next. Another, um, another mechanical system that was uh, modeled in my HVAC analysis was the cooling plant. Um, as you can see, I have modeled um, the air-cooled chillers. So uh, in this, um, in this uh, phase, I ask all the information about the schematics, uh, um, specification to, uh, to the building service engineer. So the coordination was uh, crucial. And uh, I understood uh, what was the kilowatts, what was the uh, from the specification, how they were operating the chillers. Um, so I, I understood exactly all the, uh, in the minimum detail, all the components, and uh, I input in the HVAC uh, modeling, in this case for the uh, primary circuit and then for the secondary circuit, all the value related to the specific pump power. So the specific pump power was specified in uh, um, in the uh, in the analysis uh, that with the TM54 we couldn't uh, uh, analyze. So I was very very proud to uh, to understand and to uh, include the minimal detail all this information taken from schematics um, as you can see in this slide and also um, based on discussion with the uh, with MEP. The control strategy was also uh, important because as we know the HVAC control strategy is another uh, point that we need to um, to understand in order to make work all the uh, all the components and uh, the system itself. If you go next. And finally, we um, model as well the heating system. So in uh, for London College of Fashion House for Southern as well, we have the district heating with the plate heat exchangers. Um, here, um, an example of one of the circuits that have a model in HVAC. Um, because it's a very complex uh, uh, building with a lot of systems, I have uh, um, subdivided in four uh, macro category, would say from the constant temperature circuits to the variable temperature circuits. So I have uh, created a different, uh, uh, different circle based on the, uh, on the spaces served by this. So the, uh, in more in the detail, we have the radiator based on the variable temperature circuit that I have uh, described and uh, uh, in this slide with uh, um, just a extract from uh, my Apache HVAC, um, which provides some information about uh, the, the design loop capacity and the more going more into detail about the design hot water supply temperature, which is 65, as you can see here, and outdoor temperature zero. So all this information uh, were uh, embedded in, uh, in the analysis to understand then the final, uh, the final result and uh, um, the breakdown in energy uses of the building. Um, so the, the radiators essentially were located uh, mainly uh, along the perimeter of the building and they were covering a large part uh, a large part of the building. That's why it, uh, um, uh, it caused a lot in terms of final result, as you can see here, a very um, high consumption. So, so the heating cover the, is one of the main covers, the, the highest uh, uh, energy use, energy consumption. Um, and it gives also, uh, the, based on this uh, very detailed analysis, an understanding what are the main, uh, uh, the main consumption in the building. We can see the heating, as I say, uh, um, the peak, and at the same time, we have the cooling. The cooling cover um, second uh, part of the consumption with the hot water as well. But the main uh, uh, the main focus was on the unregulated uh, energy uh, with the cover by the server and the equipment as well. As we said, a London College of Fashion is one of, is a building, a very complex building, with uh, which embed a lot of uh, um, of uh, uh, machineries, a lot of uh, 
um, component equipments. Uh, um, that's why um, the, the consumption was not very surprising in terms of uh, in terms of results. As you can see, the equipment is quite uh, is one of the largest in terms of regulated energy with the server uh, with the server as well. Also, in this uh, in the final analysis, what we demonstrate it was very important to demonstrate the results of the of meeting the target. So the assessment there was a 45 percent reduction in unregulated carbon dioxide that was exceeding actually the target that was uh, initially um, um, put in play with the, the, the client. At the same time, the predicted CO2 emission met, um, was met totally. Uh, so we uh, achieved and we uh, deliver a very high efficient building. And also we demonstrate uh, um, a good comparison confrontation with the existing UIL, as you can see in the graph. So um, the, main, uh, the main focus was to understand how the building is performing in comparison with existing universities across uh, London. If uh, our old design uh, was successful, so in this case, as you can see, um, the, was uh, quite uh, uh, was quite easy to understand um, that uh, with all of the measures, sustainability measure and the optimization of natural ventilation, uh, considering all the mechanical components uh, and uh, uh, described and uh, uh, input in very detail in the analysis, we could demonstrate and uh, um, provide to, uh, to the client and to the white team um, a more reliable result with a very high accuracy uh, in the calculation. So just in conclusion to, 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 to summarize our uh, outcomes, for in this particular case study was um, as a sustainability consultant, I was uh, coordinating uh, mainly the first concept and design stage with all the disciplines in order to understand the, um, the occupancy, understand the use of the building, uh, how the building uh, can be improved and to provide the good solutions. The, um, using the um, HVAC modeling, advanced simulation, so all the uh, operational energy uh, analysis, we identified the different the uses of the building, how, uh, what are and uh, what are what are exactly the highest uses? So in this case, the heating use was uh, as the highest consumption in the building, um, falling from the other uses, cooling and uh, uh, and the hot water. And at the same time, uh, we were um, coordinated with HMEP team, um, the control strategy, understanding where we could improve the submetering strategy. Also, we need to understand that the building that now is under construction needs to um, needs to follow up all the our um, over our recommendation in order to um, to be. Uh, um, to be uh, and be successful and well designed even after uh, construction. Um, and another uh, success was also to understand um, how the building is performing. So um, in terms of uh, uh, natural ventilation and mechanical ventilation. So important uh, focus was to promote natural ventilation. As I've described before, natural ventilation was one of the main points in our strategy and also to reduce the energy consumption and the CO2 of the building. So this is, was another important element that was um, communicate and discussed with the white team um, in order to achieve the energy savings. And uh, uh, at the same time, the HVAC control and zoning strategy um, played an important role, um, as I've uh, described uh, early in the natural ventilation uh, strategy. We were using uh, the um, uh, BMS um, and uh, so actuated window linked to the BMS system in order to provide uh, adequate natural ventilation through the space and to cross ventilate the area uh, across the atrium uh, and where was possible in order to avoid and uh, reduce the cooling uh, the cooling demand. So this was this were mainly the conclusion that were achieved after uh, post and after so the uh, HVAC modeling analysis. So at the tail, um, HVAC analysis was very important uh, um, in this case study to, uh, to meet and, uh, the target, the energy target. If you go next. So here, just as I'd like to, uh, to close our presentation. So Marco, yeah, this is just to summarize our points. There's no need to read them again. It's just as yeah. a reminder. We're happy to take any question. Thank you. For the, sorry, thanks for the presentation. So we do have some questions. And again, please do 
use the Q&A button. Uh, so if you have more questions. So the first question is, uh, I think for Marco, do you intend to look at indoor environment quality to see whether conditions meet criteria set out in the well build building standard? So uh, we target as part of our BRIAM assessment to conduct uh, during um, the first year of operation an indoor uh, quality assessment. So, so we can actually uh, prove that what was um, in terms of also uh, the ch chosen material and the um, in the space that uh, the level of not just the thermal comfort, but also the uh, kind of health environment is um, actually in operation. Thanks. Now for Daniela, this is a question with little questions in there. So bear with me. Could you please uh, clarify where do your occupancy information comes from? Where this assumed by the client? Where prospective users involved? Who made the assumptions and based on which facts? Yeah, basically we ask to uh, to the client, in this case UIL, we uh, submit an RFI, which is a document uh, um, where we want to uh, receive the specific information when the building is occupied, how the building is managed. So all this information were issued through a, um, a document that to, as a sustainability consultant, we, um, we were like assuming uh, typical profile based on the uh, on the use of the building. Let's say from students, uh, uh, or uh, in this case for student or uh, um, during uh, the week when the building is occupied. And the client, uh, after uh, he saw all the uh, assumption approved or not, or provided uh, for their information uh, uh, if they were not matching uh, the real uh, occupancy of the building. So this is, was an initial discussion with, uh, with, uh, with the client based on a document that we, um, we issued. Uh, is the LC building monitoring CO2 levels with a view to enhance not bent if measured levels high? Yeah, we um, we consider a uh, um, demand control ventilation system in the building. So the um, the open the operable window and the openable window were linked to the BMS. So based on the CO two sensors located into these spaces. And um, for Marco, in the in the project, there is use of the heating district of the UCL facilities. There is no cooling districts near there. Uh, we actually look into the option of having cooling from the same energy center, but the capacity wasn't enough to cover all the buildings. Therefore, we uh, allowed uh, basically chillers in the scheme. Uh, but we went for uh, the very low uh, global warming potential refrigerants, um, the lowest we could get at the, at the time of the design. So we, we investigate that option, but it was just not uh, doable for the specific project. Right. Brian, so uh, these were all the questions that we have so far. So thank you again to our speakers, Daniel and Marco. Thank you. And for thank giving you. a wonderful presentation. And um, please do register to our next webinar and see you again in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.